Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today in this special session prepared for you as a student. We are going to record the session and have it as a resource for the future. And um, if you're joining live here on Zoom or on Facebook, please make sure to share your questions in the comment section and in the chat. Um, we have today the topic of essay essentials and the common application. We have our guest, um, Marcy Herr from NYU Abu Dhabi, who's going to help us out in navigating the, the basic um, ideas that we need to keep in mind. Before we get started, I want to give a brief overview of what is Education USA. And then we'll jump right into the essay, part, the essay essentials and the common app portal navigation. So um, Education USA is the source of uh, information, the official source of information regarding US higher education. We are a network of more than 400 advising centers around the world. Here in Guatemala, our advising center is based at IGA, our only American Guatemalan binational center in the country. And we focus on providing guidance, resources, and helpful recommendations to students who are looking at studying at the higher level, at the higher education system and the higher education level in the US. And we often collaborate with schools such as NYU Abu Dhabi to bring information that is relevant for your application process. And so today, um, well, before we move on, I want to recommend that you reach out to us through our social media, or if you're joining from a different country, that you reach out to your closest advising center, as we are happy to help and provide tools and, and, and different uh, resources that are already prepared for you to navigate your application process. The Education USA Guatemala YouTube channel has a lot of content that has been created throughout these years, and um, it can be really useful. And now today, our guests, like I said, we have Marcy Herr from, the, from NYU Abu Dhabi. She is the Senior Outreach Officer in charge of Latin America and the Caribbean. And today we'll talk about, like I mentioned, essay topics. What is, why are essays so important for your application process? Marcy is going to shed some light into this and that uh, she'll recommend some tips as well. And then we'll go into talking about the common application. What is the common app? Why do we hear this so often? And uh, how can we get started and take advantage of that portal? So thank you, Marcy, you can take it away. Thanks for being here. Excellent, well, thank you so much, Maria Luisa. I really appreciate the opportunity to collaborate and students, thank you for being here. I really applaud you for joining this session to learn more about the US admissions process because even though we all know it can be com complicated, the more research and work that you are doing now to learn about what to expect, the easier it will be for you when the time comes. And so definitely I encourage you to continue reaching out to and staying connected to Education USA. In my segment of the presentation today, like Maria Luisa said, we're going to talk about U.S. admissions, what universities are looking for, and then we will focus specifically on the common application. What is it? How to use it to apply to universities? What tips do I have coming from a university? And then what is the common application essay? Before I begin talking about the common application and how to apply to U.S. universities, I want to focus first on what universities are actually looking for. Many universities like New York University, like NYU, use a holistic admissions process. And the way I like to think about this is kind of like a pizza where it's not complete with just one or two slices. It's the entire pizza together. And that's what admissions are like too. Everything that you can see listed here academics, activities, or your extracurricular involvement outside of the classroom, letters of recommendation from a teacher, your essays as the student 
and then also your fit for those specific universities, all of those things together are what we need in order to make an admissions decision. It's not just the grades. Of course, those are important, but it's even more than that. Again, this is just more of a, a visual. We can see in this diagram what those holistic admissions look like, not just the academics, but also you as a student. What are you passionate about and involved in? Are you a student leader? And then personally, what is your character like? What do your teachers think about you? And how can we, at least as best as possible, get to know you through your application? So all of that is what leads us to our decisions. Part of the admissions process is also determining student fit. What I mean by that is just like all students, all applicants are different, all universities are different too. And we all have different priorities and types of students that we think will really thrive and be comfortable at our university. So because of that, we're all looking for something at least a little bit different. For example, the list that I have here is what we look for for students who are applying to NYU Abu Dhabi. We are a small university with a very diverse student body and a lot of global opportunities. And also it's a highly competitive university. And so with those top academics, we need to see students who have really excelled in high school academically, who are curious and want to learn more and take advantage of all of the opportunities that we have at the university. So through the application, we try to get an idea of these different characteristics listed here. But of course, there's no perfect student profile because we are all different from each other. So that would be impossible. But this is kind of an idea of what the typical NYU Abu Dhabi student might look like. Of course, we don't just need documents submitted from students from you. We also need some things from your teachers as well. And when I take you to the Common Application website, I think you will have a better idea of what is required through the application process. But this is just a basic list of those requirements. However, that can be different from university to university, not just what they're requiring in the application process, but additionally their application deadlines as well. And so it's very important that during this process, you're staying organized with your deadlines and with what is expected of you. Because for example, some universities might require that you are taking a standardized test like the SAT or an English language proficiency exam like Duolingo or TOEFL. And so we have to make sure that all of those dates line up, right? That you're taking those exams with enough advanced time to study and also then receive your scores in time to apply to the universities you're interested in. So I suggest that you put together a timeline and really understand how all of those different deadlines come together throughout this process. From students for universities that use the common application, what we will require from you is, of course, the common app. Additionally, some universities will require the common application essay and maybe a second essay as well. And then from your teachers or your school counselor, if you have one at your school, we will need a letter of recommendation. Your transcript showing us all of your high school grades, your school profile, which is information about the school. What are your classes like? How many students are there? Where is it located in your country? Um, where do students go after they graduate from your school? All of that information is important to us to really understand your high school and where you're coming from. Many universities like NYU are now test optional. And so we no longer require the SAT, but again, that might still be a requirement for some schools you're interested in. So just make sure that you are well aware of all of those application expectations. And then finally, English language proficiency exams like TOEFL or Duolingo or IELTS. So what is the common application? Maybe you already have an account and you are really familiar with it, but if not, I'm excited to introduce you to it today. The common application is an incredible website that I'm actually going to show you after this PowerPoint. And the beauty of this website is that over 1,000 universities use the Common App as the way students apply to their school. In the US, we have over 4,000 universities. There's a lot to choose from. So not all of them use the Common Application, but about 25% of them do. And what I love about the Common App is that, for example, I'm from Pennsylvania. And when I apply to universities, 
I had selected three universities and luckily for me, they all use the common application website. So all that I needed to do was create that one common application online and I could use that for all three of those schools. So it just makes the life of the student a little bit easier and also helps you to stay organized as well. I'm going to show you the activity section actually on the website, but I wanted to first share this screenshot with you so that you can see what this part looks like when the admissions committee sees it. Because when you see it, you just see your own profile on the Common App website. But when admissions decisions are made, this is what it looks like in the activity section. We can think of it sort of like a resume. And the activity section is really important because again, it shows us what you're passionate about. In this section, you're able to add up to 10 different activities, but that doesn't mean you need to add 10. It's really quality is more important than quantity. So for example, if you are only involved in one thing, it's just a job that you've had for a couple of years now. And because of that job, you didn't have time for anything else. So it's the only thing we're putting in your activity section. That's okay, we understand that. There's really no right, there's not a correct answer to this activity section. It doesn't matter if you're involved in community service, a job, sports, music, art, church, whatever that looks like for you is what we want to see, what you're passionate about, what you're giving your time to, and what you're involved in, whether it's a school activity or unrelated to your school as well. So we can see a student example here, this student was involved in a computer club, he developed an app, he was on the basketball team. We can see that he was not only a player, but he also was the captain of the team. He was involved in community service, the math Olympiads in Argentina, and he also created his own computer battery club. So a good mix of very different activities. And what we can see in the description of each of those is a small blurb, just less a very, you only have a couple sentences that you can share in that box about your involvement specifically. So for example, not just I was on the basketball team for four years, but rather I led the team. Because remember, we want to see you, we want to see your character and things about you through this involvement. And so now I know, okay, this student was a leader. He was the captain of his team. Before I actually go to the Common Application website, I want to talk a little bit about the Common App essay and some strategies that you can use to write the essay. Not all universities require the Common Application essay, but for the ones that do, it's a really important part of the application process because if you think about the other parts of the application like your grades, maybe standardized test scores, your activities section, there's not really much space for you to express yourself. But with this essay, you really can say anything. You can share any story from your life that you think is the most representative of you, the most interesting thing about you, in order for the admissions committee to really better understand you and what made you who you are today. It really allows you to set your application apart and to show us what makes you different. And especially as international students, it's really important that your grammar and your spelling are perfected in this essay, because it sort of is like a writing sample for us to assess whether or not we think you are ready for an English speaking university. And so keep that in mind and definitely give yourself plenty of time for the editing process. I love reading common application essays because since you have total control over this part of the application, students really get creative. And I've read essays about so many different topics. Just like with the activity section, there's not a right or wrong answer for the essay. It's your story. And so even though I know it can be a bit overwhelming or stressful to try to figure out what to write, keep in mind that this is your space to shine. This is your space to really introduce yourself to us. And, and so there's not really a way for you to be incorrect in doing so. For example, last year I read an essay from a student here in Mexico where I live who wrote a poem instead of an essay. And he wanted to be a creative writing major at the university. And so for him, that really made sense. That was the best way for him to uh, introduce himself 
in that creative way. Whereas for me personally, I would never be able to write a poem for my essay because I'm just not really a creative person. So it really depends on you. For this essay, there are seven different questions on the Common Application website, and you can only choose one of them as the prompt or the essay question that you want to respond to. I recommend that, again, you start this process early. Start today, start this weekend. Look at those seven questions and begin to think about what essay you might want to write and what story you might want to tell. I really like the point on this PowerPoint that's bolded. What do you want the reader to learn from the essay? So if you think about it, we already have information about your grades, your activity section. We know a little bit about you. But when we finish reading that essay, what really completes the picture for us? What do you want us to remember about you and your application? I suggest that when you start this process, you consider all seven of the questions. Free write, think about how you could possibly respond to each of those different ones. And as you do so, and as you brainstorm and develop your ideas, it should become clearer to you which question out of the seven is the best choice for you. And then as you begin to edit and really perfect your essay, you can worry about the word count and getting it under the required 650 words. Here you can see the common application essay instructions, letting us know that the essay should be between 250 and 650 words. And it's really your chance to teach us something new about you, something that we didn't already know. If you want to take a picture of this slide, these are last year's seven common um, application essay questions. I'm also going to share a link with you in the chat box that you can copy down so that later you can go back and, and review these different prompts or questions. Like I said, you can only choose one out of the seven to respond to. The secret is that even though these were the prompts from last year, usually they don't change. If they do, maybe only one or two of them will change, but we can pretty much assume that they will be very similar next year. And so you can be reviewing these now to start to think about what story you might want to tell and which out of the seven you would choose. The common application is always open. You can create an account today for free and start to use the website and really um, familiarize yourself with it. However, every August 1st is when it resets and then it begins accepting applications for that next academic cycle. For example, for NYU, our application deadlines are November 1, January 1, and January 5. So from August 1st until January 5th, students can begin submitting their applications for the following August. So really from beginning to end, the process can be a year long, which is why it's very important to stay organized with those deadlines. But like I said, you could create your common application account today, even if you still have a bit of time before you are going to be submitting your application. So before we go to the Common App website, just a couple additional suggestions and, and tips to make your application stronger. In terms of academics, we really suggest that you challenge yourself, but based on what's available at your school. When we review applications, we are not comparing your grades to a student in another school, but rather your grades within your school. So we try to understand the classes that you had, how difficult they were, and then how you did. Did you take the most difficult classes that you could and did you get good grades? That's what we are looking for. NYU, again, like I mentioned, many other universities are test optional. That's a policy that changed during the pandemic. And what it means is that if you want to apply to a university without taking the SAT or the ACT, you can do that. And we will just judge your academics based on your grades from school. We don't necessarily need those standardized test scores as well. In terms of the activity section, like I mentioned, we just wanna see what you're passionate about, what you are giving your time to. For the essay, it should be as unique as possible. No other student in Guatemala should be able to tell the same story that you do in that essay because it's so unique to you personally. 
And finally, for the letter of recommendation, that should come from a teacher who knows you well. Maybe not all universities you apply to will require this letter of recommendation. For NYU, we only require one. And if you want to submit a second or a third letter of recommendation, you could, but we suggest that that comes from a person who knows you in a different way. So for example, maybe I get one from my teacher who can talk about my academics and what I'm like as a student, and then my coach or my boss writes a letter of recommendation for me as well because it's providing two different sides of my life. Also, everything that you submit through the common application, the letter of recommendation, your high school grades, your activity section, everything needs to be in English. We're applying to US universities. And so it's important that if your teachers are not English speakers that you are getting those documents translated. So at this point, I want to move to the Common Application website. But again, if you do have any questions along the way, feel free to let us know in the chat box and we can get to those. So here you can see I have already logged into my Common Application account. But I will also share this link here with you so that you have the website and, and can, again, create your own free account. So now that I am logged into my own practice account here, we are going to go through and I'm going to just give you some suggestions and guidance along the way of what uh, you can expect if you're applying to US universities that use this website. Before we actually begin building the common application, we have to decide what universities we want to apply to. So we can start here in the college search tab. You can see there are over 1,000 universities that use the Common App, which is far too many. So if we filter that by country, let's just look at universities in the United States. Since most of the schools, uh, 974 of those 1,000 plus are from the U.S. So that will be our focus. And let's look at universities in California and Florida. So that has us down to 79 universities, which is still a lot. But what's really neat is that you can go through this list of 79 schools, and it's a really good starting place to do your research. So for example, if I just look at this one, Barry University, I can see the contact details of their admissions department for people like myself, links to their social media, a virtual campus tour, their website, I can learn about the application deadlines and requirements. I see that for international students, there is not an application fee. I can apply for free. And let's say, for example, after we go to the website, <clears throat> excuse me, for Barry University, and we look at things like their academics, what their student body is like, their campus looks beautiful, um, and we learn as much as we can. If ultimately you decide that this is a university that you would like to apply to in Miami, I'm going to add that to my list. And the neat thing about the common application is that because right now I'm in my common app account, as I do my research in this college search tab, it's going to save the schools that I have added to my list. And I can see them here. I have, how many is that? six universities picked up. Maybe later I decide I only want to apply to five of them so you can personalize it further and get rid of some of those other schools. So now that I have completed my university research, which of course is going to take much longer than that, I now want to show you the common application itself. So all of these sections here, profile, family, education, testing, that is what it are, those are the parts of my common app, my common application. So when I apply to these four universities, I'm going to use the same information, that same common application for all four of those schools. A lot of these questions are pretty straightforward. And so they don't require too much explanation, but like Maria Luisa said in the chat box, remember, we are listing our legal name here in the Common App. 
And so if you were paying attention, you remember I introduced myself as Marcy, but actually my legal first name is Martha. But I do want to share my nickname, Marcy, with the university admissions because when they email me or call me, I prefer that they call me Marcy rather than Martha. But it is important that I list my legal name because this common application needs to match all of the other documents, like my test scores, for example, that universities are receiving. Most of these other sections, your address, your phone number, are going to be pretty clear and easy to understand. But there are two more that I want to just review with you. One is geography and nationality. You'll notice that not all of these questions are required. There's not a little red star with all of them. That means they're optional. It's not going to help or hurt my application if I choose to leave them blank, but I went ahead and I answered those couple, those first three that are optional. Next, these last couple required questions in this section are asking about the visa process. Keep in mind, right now we are applying for admissions and acceptance to the university. This is not your visa application. So answer these questions to the best of your ability, but for right now, we're not going to stress about the visa because we're only applying for admissions. So maybe your situation is citizen of non-US country. We will add Guatemala. Do you currently hold a valid US visa? No. Do you intend to apply for a new or different visa? I said, yes. And then when it shows me the visa types, this question is optional. I assume that it will be an F1 student visa. Out of that whole list. But again, this section, um, right now we are not applying for a visa. And so it's not something you have to stress about. Moving on to the common app fee waiver. This question is really important because it can be quite expensive to apply to universities. For example, to apply to NYU just to submit the common application is 80 US dollars. In addition to that, there are other costs as well, like standardized tests you might want to take. So it really can add up. That's why this question is awesome. It's asking me if for any, uh, if the financial, excuse me, if um, those application fees would be a financial burden to my family if we cannot pay that. Some universities, like we saw earlier, are free to apply to, but for universities that do have an application fee, sometimes they will be willing to pay that for students. And so if that would be a financial burden, the only thing you need to do is say, yes, I am eligible for the fee waiver based on my finances, and just type your full formal name. Later in my common application, I'm going to add the contact details of a teacher from my school. And when I do so, the common application will contact them and say, for example, dear teacher, Marcy Her is applying to NYU and she expressed that she needs a fee waiver. Based on your knowledge of the student, can you verify this? And my teacher just will need to check a box in order for me to receive the fee waiver from NYU. So keep that in mind. The family section, I'm just going to add the names of my parents, whether or not I live with them and their highest level of education. Did they complete high school? Did they go to university? What is their situation? And then it will also ask you about your siblings. How many do you have and how old are they? Again, admissions are holistic. So we really want to get a full understanding of you and your situation. The education section is where I want to spend a bit more time because I know it can be a little bit complicated for international students applying through the common application. Remember, over 900 of the universities that use this website are based in the US. And so because of that, the common application was designed for students who are coming from US high schools. That being said, every year, thousands of international students from all over the world are using the common application website as well. And so don't let that intimidate you, but just remember that if some of these questions might not apply to you, that's why, and it's okay, we understand that. That's not going to disadvantage you in any way. 
So to start off, you need to add the name of your school. So I added the American School of Guatemala. If you're unable to find your high school in this list, you will just need to add the name and address of your school on your own. Next, date of entry. When did you start there? Is this a boarding school? Do you live there? Will you graduate from this school? When will you graduate? The next question is asking if there was any sort of gap in your timeline during school. Did you have to take time off? Were you advanced a year based on academics or whatever other reason? Will you graduate early? If not, if you just went straight through and had a normal academic timeline, then we can just skip this section. However, if for some reason there was a gap in your timeline, we just want to understand why, what were you doing? So for example, due to COVID-19, I decided to take a gap year between high school and university. During this time, I volunteered at a local hospital and worked at my family business. It's just providing us with more context and more of an understanding of your situation. If you attended more than one school, more than one high school, we need to know the name of that school. Keep in mind, in the United States, high school is four years long. And you are going to be adding the information to the common application that is the equivalent of that. And so, Maria Luisa, if you wouldn't mind just chiming in to explain to us what that is like coming from the Guatemalan context. Sorry, can you repeat the question? I was looking at something else. Yeah, no, for sure. So just comparing the four-year US system to in Guatemala. So when students are completing the common application coming from a Guatemalan school, how many years of information should they be completing? And, and then specifically with the question right here, if they do have more than one school to report, I imagine they would be adding that in this section. Correct. So when we talk about Guatemala, we have to look at still four years of grades that you will submit. If you're in a Guatemalan system, a Guatemalan school, you would be looking at quinto bachillerato, cuarto bachillerato, tercero básico, y segundo básico. And then you would submit the grades for those four years as your high school grades, keeping in mind that in the US, high school is four years total. So you have to submit still four years of academic records equivalent to segundo básico to uh, your last year, which could be quinto bachillerato. And uh, if you have more years in your diversificado, still count backwards from that last grade um, until you get four years of academic records. Amazing. Thank you for that. And so because of that, you will also be adding the second name of your school in that section. If you were able to take university courses at some point um, during high school or before submitting this common application, we just need to know the name of that university and when you were enrolled there. In the grade section, you are going to be adding your current classes that you are taking. Oh, sorry, we didn't get to that yet. In the grade section, you're going to be adding three different pieces of information. The first question is the approximate size of your graduating class. How many students will finish school with you? And so just ask your teachers, perhaps they will tell you that there are 80 students in your graduating class. The next question, class rank is, Okay, so based on academics, out of those 80 students, where do you fall academically? Are you number one? Are you number 80? They are able to look at the records and let you know maybe perhaps you are number 32. That being said, class rank is very common for high schools in the United States and very uncommon for high schools outside of the United States. So if your school does not use class rank, they don't have this information available or use this system, then we can just leave that blank. It's not a required question. And you can move on to the last question in the grades section, and that is GPA. Perhaps your school has GPA, or maybe you've only seen it in a movie about um, the US, but GPA stands for 
grade point average. Some schools use this as a way to measure their students' grades. Perhaps it is out of 100 or maybe it's out of 4.0. And so your teachers should be able to provide you with what the average of all of your grades is from school if your school uses this system. If not, again, we will just leave that optional question blank and move on. The next section, current or most recent year courses, you're going to list out the classes that you currently have. First, tell us how many you currently have and then what subjects. You're also able to add the course level. So we can look through this list to determine which is the most appropriate, but maybe none of these make sense for your school. And so you can just say NA not applicable. Keeping in mind that also your schools are going to need to send your official grades or your transcript to the university. Your transcript. And of course, that document will need to be in English. Many high schools have academic honors available to students, but this looks different at each school in terms of what is available for students to potentially win. I've added some examples here, Dean's List, Honor Roll. These could be at a school level, a regional level, an international level even. But again, it's really dependent on what's available at your school personally. Community-based organizations. For this question, we're just curious, did any organization provide you with free assistance on your application? I hope your answer to that is yes. I hope you continue to work with Education USA, like I have listed here, in order to receive free assistance on your application. And finally, future plans. This is not the section where you are telling us specifically what degree you, you want. Later, we need to answer that question for each university we are applying to because they all have different programs available. But this is more broadly or in generally speaking, what is your career interest? Do you wanna be a therapist, a writer, a teacher, a nurse, a lawyer? Maybe what you're interested in is listed here. Perhaps you're thinking international K-pop DJ. And you can add that. And then the final part is, what is the highest degree that you intend to earn? And so for example, after your four-year bachelor's degree at New York University, are you going to go on for further studies, do you think? Do you want a two-year master's degree, a business degree, a law, a medical degree? We're not asking you to make a commitment to this right now, but as of this moment, what is your future plan? What are your dreams? And that is the end of the education section. If you have questions, we can of course come back to that, but let's next move to the testing section. In this section, we are going to self-report our scores. What that means is that if there are any exam scores that you want to share with the university, you can do so here, but because they are coming from you, we still will need you to make sure that those two exams that you selected, the SAT and the Duolingo, you still need to ensure that those exams are sending the official scores to each university that you are applying to. Now, because I've added SAT and Duolingo here, it's given me two extra sections where I can add in those scores and testing dates. Here's the activity section that we looked at previously. It looks a little bit different because like I told you, this is the student side where we are inputting that information. You're able to add up to 10 activities and they could be in these example categories. You could add, well, I don't suggest you leave this section blank because it is very important, but you can add one activity or up to 10, starting with the activity that, that is the most impressive because that's what we will see first. With each activity, we have to pick the category add your leadership position, tell the organization's name, and then in your description, tell us what you specifically contributed to that organization. 
I want to show you that it's important to preview each section of the Common App to make sure there are no typos and that everything is spelled correctly and is understandable. We're not using acronyms like PMMC because the person reading my application probably doesn't know that the PMMC is the Penn Manor School Math Club. So spell things out and make sure that it is translated. Our final section is the writing section. This is the essay that we were looking at earlier. The instructions explain to us that not all four of the universities we are applying to require the common application essay but because I already have to write it for NYU. It's required. I will just send it to the other three anyway. It can't hurt. Maybe they won't even read it since it's not required, but I am proud of it. So I will share that with them as well. Here's again our instructions letting us know the essay should be between 250 and 650 words and is your space to very clearly introduce yourself and show us what makes you an amazing person and student. Again, you can only choose one out of these seven questions. And when your essay has been finalized and perfected, you can add it here to this space. There are two other questions in the additional information section that we need to answer to finish up. The first one is about COVID-19. And it wants to know what was the impact of the pandemic on your life, on your academics? And are there any differences in your experience compared to other students? Of course, we all went through difficult times and we know that. You don't need to explain in this text box that your classes were online. We know they were, they were for everyone. But is there anything extra about your experience that we should know in order to really give your application a fair assessment and really understand your life? If yes, then you can add that information in this box. I'm not sure if they will keep that question next year, uh, but we will see. On August 1st is when we will find out if there are any changes made from last year's application to this year's Common App. And the final question is, do you wish to provide details of circumstances or qualifications not reflected in the application? So what this is saying is, okay, at this point, we have a lot of information about you, but is there anything else you want to add that we don't already have that is really important for us to, to know in order to understand your story? If yes, you can add that here, but this box is not a place to add, for example, a bonus essay or overflow from a different section. But if there's truly something else we should know about you, then feel free to add that in this box. I want to share with you this article that my colleague wrote. I'll drop this link in the chat box. But basically, this is just advice on how to use the additional information section. There are many other articles that NYU staff have written about the application process. But the good news is that many other universities do the same thing. And so take advantage of those free resources online that are provided to you to support you through this process. And that is the end of the common application. We've completed all of the sections except for this last one, courses and grades. And that's because none of the universities that we have selected to apply to require this. But if one of them does, basically you just need to list out all of the classes that you have taken. So everything we just went through, that is what makes the common application. And that is what will go to each of the schools that you decide to apply to. From university to university, it will be the same common app. However, in order to finish up, we have to return to the My Colleges section. In this tab, we are going to do three things. Complete college specific questions, invite our recommenders and then submit. So let's just briefly do that for NYU and then with remaining time, we'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. So start thinking of those or typing those in the chat box. So when I click on NYU, this brings me back to the basic information that we saw at the beginning. But what I need to do are these three things. I'm going to start by inviting my recommenders. First, I will need to authorize this privacy agreement 
And what this means is, yes, I understand that my teacher is going to send a letter of recommendation about me to the university without me seeing it. And that's okay with me. I understand the process. So that is the FERPA. And now I am ready to invite my recommender. When the common application opens on August 1st, let's pretend that the deadline I have selected to apply to NYU is January 1. As I'm working on my application in August, September, oh, whoopsies, do I know my months or not? Um, in, in the months of the fall, August, September, October, November, as I am working on my application, my teacher can be doing the same thing, even though I haven't submitted it yet. So if I just go to this section, I add their name and their email address, they are going to be contacted directly by the Common App. And the Common App will say, hello, teacher, Marcy Hurt is applying to NYU, and we need you to submit a letter of recommendation, information about the school, and Marcy's official grades. And my teacher can then do that directly through that Common Application website because they will create a teacher account that is linked to my account as you can see here with my counselor, Mr. Daniel. So because I have already added him to my profile, I can see what he has completed on my behalf and what he is still working on in terms of those counselor requirements. If you don't have a counselor at your school, that's okay, this information will just need to come from a teacher. The next thing I need to do is answer questions that are specific to the university. So for example, in this section, I will answer questions like, what do you want to study at NYU? Biology, chemistry, art, music, um, psychology. So you'll have to choose the program that you're interested in for each of the universities because they all have different programs, of course. It will ask you if you are interested in living on campus in the university housing or not. You will live in an apartment somewhere. It will ask if you're applying for scholarships, and if you have any relatives who go to that university. But all of the questions in this section are specific to NYU. And once I've completed my common application and I've completed these questions, then I can come to this tab finally and submit my application before the deadline. So that is truly the end of the process. Step number one, college search. Step number two, the common app, and then finally, the My Colleges section. Along the way, remember there are so many resources in place to support you, whether it's information representatives like myself or Maria Luisa at Education USA, or even here in the Common Application website itself. If you've noticed, there's a need help box the whole way through that you can always turn to to be seeking advice and answers to questions that you may have. So with that, I will end here, but I'm happy to review any of those sections or answer questions that you might have at this point. But thank you so much. All right, awesome. Thank you, Marcy. Um, we did get some questions and one of them is, um, what if I'm not sh still sure to which school I will apply? Can I still begin my common app? Awesome question. Yes, definitely. You can still, you can start the common application today. You can be doing your research and going through and looking at all of these schools, playing around with it, adding them to your account, taking them off later if you decide not to apply to them. But definitely you can already create your common application account. The only thing is that on August 1st, when the common app begins accepting applications for the next application cycle, like I mentioned, the website will reset. So if any of the questions change a little bit and I've already answered them, then I might lose the information that I've submitted. And so I suggest that for sections like the essay or the activity section that are a bit more detailed, make sure you are saving that somewhere else and not just on this website, but definitely you can start without knowing what universities you're going to apply to yet. Great. And um I've been sharing some resources in the comment section on Facebook and here on the Zoom. And I think this next thing I'm gonna share has some uh, basic information that could be useful. 
One of them is the, uh, the general link tree that takes you to our YouTube channel. And on in the YouTube channel, there is a playlist that we've done uh, in the past uh, collaborating with Costa Rica. And there are two sessions there. One is about financial aid and the other one's about the search. And those two sessions can help you out with that broad first step, which is searching your options and how you're going to finance your studies. That can help then to have your choices once you move on to the common app and um, start to list the schools you want to apply to. The next question, Marcy, is can I list any kind of activities or hobbies, even if they are not related to what I want to major in? Definitely. Absolutely. In this section, we are just interested in really understanding more about your involvement, whether or not that has to do with what you want to study. And maybe you don't know what you want to study yet. But that's going to be different um, from country to country. I believe for universities that are in the UK, for example, in London, it's very important that your involvement right now aligns with your academic interests that you're pursuing because they want to see that you're really preparing yourself for that. Here with US universities with the common application, that's not the case. Let's say, for example, that I think someday I want to be a chemistry major. It's okay if this activity section is showing my involvement in my school's art club, my job on the weekends, and me playing on the football team. That's fine. They do not need to be related. Right. And I think here it's valid to highlight that your extracurricular activities and hobbies and volunteering. Um, think about what that says about you. You know, what do you do with your free time? What do you do when you're not a good student? Because that's just expected, right? Good grades are expected. What are you doing with your free time? Volunteering somewhere or kind of falling in the vortex of social media? So reflect on that aspect. Um, we, ha we have a, a funny question, Marcy. What would be something that will immediately attract NYU's admissions officer, office's attention, office attention? I think the application essay, because that essay is where you can really be creative and, and be yourself. So for example, maybe you're a really funny student, and so your essay has a bit of humor in it, or maybe you've accomplished something that you're super proud of, and you can share that with us in the essay or you've gone through a pretty difficult time. And, and so we can learn more about you and your resilience and how strong you are through you sharing that story with us. For me, that's where applications really stand out and um, can distinguish one from the next. When we're seeing applications all with such strong academics, how can you make yours different? For me, it's through the essay and then also the activity section as well. Right, it's the, the blank canvas, right? The, the chance to yeah. do something from scratch. Whereas your grades have been, you know, building up throughout many years, uh, they're a bit more static in that sense. And then your essay is a, it's a very important element. Um, we got another question. What if my teachers don't speak English? I mean, I think they mean probably for the recommendation letters. Do they have to translate them and still not look at them? Or what could you recommend? It really depends on you and your situation. So perhaps there's a different teacher at your school that would be able to help and translate that um, and then still submit it to the university. If that's the case, sometimes instead of the teacher directly uploading it to the teacher's Common App account, maybe they will email it to the university. Also, a lot of students end up having to go and find someone to professionally translate that essay for them, if perhaps someone in their school can't do that for them. Um, and so in that case, if you would need to read the essay, we understand, I mean, the letter of recommendation, excuse me, we understand, uh, but what's most important is that it's in English. Right, and I think too, one important element here that Marcy mentioned is that you wanna ask up for a recommendation from someone that's going to take the time to write one page, two pages of your strengths, the challenges you faced, those little uh, nuance elements that you bring into the classroom or the context in which they know you. 
instead of just looking at asking a, for a recommendation from the principal of your school. The title of the person is not as important as the, co as the content yeah. in that recommendation letter. So make sure that you reflect on who is going to take the time to do it and send it in time and knows you uh, in different contexts and knows your strengths and your challenges and your um, contribution to that student community that you're a part of. Um, someone sent a question here in, 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 on Zoom about the difference between an associate's degree, a bachelor's degree. I'd invite you to look at the link tree I just sent so that you can take a look at our general informative session in which I go over those differences. And if you still have further questions, you can reach out to us. Another question that we have is about still the, the letters of recommendations. You mentioned uh, the FERPA, the waiving of, of looking at the recommendation letter. Someone's wondering, what if they want to see the letter of recommendation? So maybe you can explain what's the importance of waiving that uh, permit. Yeah, um, at least in my experience, it's not typical for students to see their letter of recommendation. Hopefully you can trust uh, your relationship with your teacher. That they would be writing a good one for you that's positive, but um, also don't overthink it. This is really just meaning to check this box that um, yes, I understand the letters are confidential. That's just how the process works. For us, when you are checking this box, we really, believe more that we are getting a truthful opinion from the, your teacher because they are writing their their honest opinion their honest experience with you knowing that you're not reading that um, but again hopefully it's all positive positive. and i think it was a really really good advice um, from maria luisa to to ask a teacher to write that for you who knows you well and quite personally but i also will add to that that you are not their only student and so make sure you are giving them plenty of time to submit all of these required documents on your behalf, especially if it would need to be translated, um, because that is a lot of work for them, for each of their students. And I actually worked with a school a couple years ago, and the teacher told me my student was going to apply to NYU, but at the end they didn't. I'm so sorry, because they asked me on December 26th to help them with their application. And the deadline was January 1st. And we had been talking about it for months and they waited until the last minute. And the teacher said, I was on holiday, the school was closed. And so there was nothing she could do to support the student. And so as early in advance as you can start this process, the better and um, make sure you give your teachers plenty of time also. Right, absolutely. And then also don't, don't be shy of reminding them a, a kind email a couple weeks or days after if you haven't heard from them just a gentle email reminder about the deadline about the request can be really useful i'm also sending a link here on different pdfs that the common app has as a resource for you to make sure that you you've got everything ready kind of like checklists within these uh documents there are Sheet, cheat sheets that you can use to remind your teacher in uh, of what kinds of projects you did with them and what kinds of experiences you've had with them. Because as Marcy said, you're not their only student. And so it's, it's useful to have this resource as a reminder of those things that they've done with you. So I don't know, Marcy, do you have any last comments as we wrap this up that you would like to highlight? Sure, I think just at this point, keep information gathering. I Again, I'm proud of you for joining us for this session today, but just remember that there are so many resources in place for you, whether it's Education USA or YouTube or older students who have already gone through this process or maybe your teachers who are familiar with it, um, but definitely keep learning as much as you can now and stay organized with those deadlines to make the process a, a bit smoother for you when the time comes. Great. Well, um, remember, this is going to be as a resource is going to be on our Facebook page. 
We'll try to get it to our YouTube, but that may take a, a little bit of time. So make sure that even if you don't have Facebook, you um, you borrow that from your parents. And uh, thank you so much for joining. The links and everything are gonna be, uh, they'll be in the comment section on our Facebook. And make sure to reach out if you need any help. Thank you so much, Marcy, for joining us. And thank you everyone for being here and good luck with your application process. Bye-bye.